Hello everyone. So in this particular presentation, we will see how to solve a problem with regard system properties and also convolution sum and convolution integral. So first of all, one problem I am taking over here is with respect to system properties. So let us describe the question over here in the particular presentation. So question is given in this order for the given system determine whether the system is linear time invariant whether it is memoryless causal or stable this is what we have to verify so the first problem as set a is given that is the continuous time signal y of t which is equal to e to the power x of t so for this given continuous time signal whether this signal is linear or non-linear time invariant, memoryless, causal, stable, all these properties have to be verified. So now over this question, y of t is acting as a system. So nothing but we can also write that as y of t is equal to, it is something operator t on to x of t. So that operator is exponential as per the given question, y of t is equal to e to the power x of t. So now for the given question, first we will look forward with respect to the whether it is linear or non-linear condition. So to check the linearity, so we have the condition like this. To check the linearity, we need to prove the operator t on to ax1 of t plus b into x2 of t, which is should be equal to a into operator on to x1 of t plus b into operator on to x2 of t. This is what we have to prove the left hand side and then right hand side for the given y of t. So first I will take left hand side of this uh, the to prove the conditions of operator on a into x1 of t plus b into x2 of t. If I replace x of t by a into x1 of t plus b into x2 of t in given y of t then with respect to that it says e to the power a into x1 of t plus b into x2 of t so this if i split this equation e to the power a into x1 of t into b into e, uh, e to the power b into x2 of t this is what uh, the after splitting of the previous equation. So this will not now look the right hand side of the equation what I just earlier mentioned to be proved. So it is not equal to a into the operator of the t into x1 of t. That means I should say over here it should be e to the power x1 of t with the separately multiplied by a but I don't have in the previous condition a into e to the power x1 of t it is not like that so it is e to the power a into x1 of t so a is there within the power of this so it is not following the linearity condition hence the given y of t that system is non-linear sorry so second condition to be proved is whether it is time variant or invariant to check time invariant condition we should follow this equation that is x of t minus t naught which is equal to y into y of t minus t naught this is what we have to prove but um, we know that operator t on to x of t will provide x y of t so same way if i do the operator on to x of t minus t naught it need to provide y of t minus t naught that is what exactly we have to be written so let's take this condition x of t minus t naught into the equation replacing x of t by t by t minus t naught so into the equation it means e to the power x of t minus t naught but with respect to if I write it for y of t also replacing t by minus t naught t minus t naught for y of t it is gives e to the power x of t minus t naught hence these two conditions same nothing but x of t minus t naught which is equal to y of t minus t naught so it is following the time invariant condition hence system is time invariant to be followed the same condition with respect to the same problem uh, whether it is memoryless 
so let me look forward to the memoryless condition the value the value of the output y of t depends only on the present values of the input x of t hence system is memoryless because here if t varies in the given x of t input if it is varies output is going to be varies the present value t depends upon t if i replace t naught t by t naught here t naught will be obtained so y of t naught which is equal to e to the power x of t naught so when i replace t by something else on the output also that value need to be changed hence the y of t always depends upon the present value of the input x of t hence system is memoryless for the given example or given the problem y of t is equal to e to the power x of t the fourth one to be proved is causality so as i earlier mentioned the for the same problem y of t is equal to e to the power x of t for this condition this is always the output always depends upon the present values so under causal causality it says the output depends on the future value of the input here it is not, not does not depend on the future value hence system is causal if the output is dependent on to the future value of the input then i will say it is non causal but here in the case the output is depends upon the present input hence system is cause to be proved stability condition we should say the bounded input and bounded output condition if the input is bounded then output is also bounded that is what the stability condition which we going to be say so x of t whatever is given if it is a finite value nothing but it is something value of the b of x so it is not equal to infinity it should be less than infinity but uh, the same thing uh, the output y of t is also should be something with the finite value so even this particular problem x of t i i will say it is a finite value then y of t is also going to be a finite value as it is mentioned it is e to the power x of t it is also sorry it is also a finite value by so it is not infinity so bounded input i am getting bounded output so that's why system is stable so this is how we can able to find the system properties for any given particular system over here we taken a continuous time signal and we proved different particular properties of systems with respect to the problem y of t is equal to e to the power x of t so to be continued to the next particular problem statement is with respect to the continuous sorry convolution sum so let me look forward to the uh, problem uh, statement over here consider the input signal x of n and the impulse response h of n is given below so x of n is given like this x of n is equal to one uh, defined for time interval n over the range zero to four and uh, else it is zero so h of n is given is equal to alpha to the power n defined over to the interval 0 to 6 for time interval here it is n because the given signal is discrete in nature else the value is 0 but here alpha should always greater than 1 this is what they provided so as per the given problem statement we have x of n we have h of n but i have to compute the output of a signal y of n so the given signals over here are discrete in nature hence if i want to find the output y of n in terms of convolution it we will say it is convolution sum equation so uh, as a earlier uh, presentation whatever the mention is convolution sum equation it says y of n is equal to x of n convoluted with respect to h of n so this is for the convolution sum representation this equation next line the elaborated equation for convolution sum it says y of n is equal to summation k equal to minus infinity to infinity x of k into h of n minus k this is the equation number one i'll keep as it is uh, because uh, uh, i'll refer always this equation throughout this particular problem so let me look forward to further the given equation is given only in terms of equation x of n and h of n i'll try to represent that in terms of graph x of n is equal to one defined for zero one two three four values so that is what it is plotted over here yeah, except all other values are zero as you can observe here so similarly i have to plot for h of n also 
So I'll look forward to h of n. It is defined as alpha to the power n from 0 to 6. So I'll, if I write the graph for h of n, so the values from 0 to 6, we have alpha to the power n. When n equal to 0, alpha to the power 0 is 1. When n equal to 1, alpha to the power 1 is 1 alpha to the power 1. So, when n equal to 2, alpha to the power 2. So, similarly, when it reaches to n equal to 6, alpha to the power 6, we can able to reach. Except, or remaining the values are going to be 0 in the time axis n for both x of n and h of n. So, this is what we plotted, the given equation. We plotted the signal. Next, I just look forward the convolution sum between x of n and h of n have to be performed. But as per the equation, we have x of k and h of n minus k. So, to solve the convolution sum, represent the x of n and h of n in the variable of k. That is what it is mentioned in the equation 1. x of k have to be represented. Instead of x of n, I have to write it in terms of x of k. So, replacing time unit n by k. That's it. For h of n also, replacing n by time unit k over here. So, h of k. But I have, I need to have h of n minus k. So, what I need to do, take the time reversal of this, then replace the time shift also. That is, time shift is with respect to plus n have to be written, but we are not representing that in terms of time shift. Uh, we just reverse it, h of n or sorry, h of k, we are reversed reversed sorry h of k is we are reversed and we obtain the graph like this but we are representing only that zero value which is defined as equal to n and the k value sorry this minus 6 value which reaches to n minus 6 because we are saying replacing h of k by h of n minus k nothing but this zero reaches to n so, the last value n minus 6, that is what the difference is which is going to be obtained. So, but as per the equation 1 for convolution sum, we have h of n minus k instead of h of k. So, this is what we can plot it. Sorry, I'll just come back to the equation. So, now using equation 1, we have to overlap this h of n minus k into over to the x of k. This is what we uh, have to do it. So, we are looking forward one by one. We are overlapping h of n minus k over to the x of k. This is what we are doing. So, from the left hand side, we are starting, we are moving this h of n minus k from the extreme left hand side for the x of k. Uh, if I do that particular condition, I'll come back to this equation. So, I'll just take one instant. So, if suppose h of n minus k, which is drawn in a different color, h of n minus k, which is extreme left for the x of k. So, it is not overlapping each other. That is nothing but we can say here, uh, as you can observe, the first value or first interval or first digit uh, or the value of k which is equal to n as it is mentioned over here. So, that is not overlapping with the k equal to 0 value. So, this is not overlapping. That is nothing but I can say this n k equal to n value should be less than 0. So, when n is less than 0, you can observe it is not overlapping each other. So, in the product of this x of k into h of n minus k should equal to 0. So, hence, the product of this is equal to 0 or also if I take the summation of this, that is nothing but convolution sum. So, y of n the equation 1 says the product of this x of k into h of n minus k is 0. So, the y of n is also going to be 0 when n is less than 0. So, now I just move further. Now, I just need to move this further to the right hand side step by step. So, nothing but little bit this is pushed into these regions. Nothing but this n value should be more than 0 and this n value should be less than 4. This is what the condition I can take it in a case 2. So, when n is greater than or equal to 0, one possibility and other possibility, n is less than or equal to 4. This is what the condition which we need to take. So, under this particular case, if I consider, then um, if I take this particular condition, then what we can say n is lies between 0 to 4. That is what the range which we can 
say it with respect to this equation. So now uh, I just need to go into the equation number one so that y of n I can substitute and I can find the value. So as we said uh, the y of n uh, we have to substitute the value of uh, the n range 0 to 4 as I said this uh, by shifting the h of n minus k on over to the x of k that means we are moving this n over to 0 over to 0 more than 0. So nothing but it should be might be la the value of k equal to n this value should be lies between the x of k value between the range from 0 to 4 that is what we are saying. So n should be greater than 0 and should be less than or equal to 4. So this is what the range which is just been done. So nothing but 0 however it should be there but maximum possibility is n. That's why with respect to the equation 1 if I take y of n is equal to then summation will be k equal to 0 to n will be the possibility for x of k into h of n minus k. But x of k is always constant 1 as you can see this is one particular instant I taken so 0, 1, 2 that is possibly overlapping only 3 values are overlapping here we can find but you can also take this k equal to n I can also take till reach 4 is possibility then 0 to 4 is all, all are going to be overlap but here only 3 is overlapping as per this instance. So here this particular case if I take the values range from 0 to n which is considered so but however x of k values constantly it is equal to 1 that is what it is mentioned here. So h of n minus k that value is in terms of alt alpha to the power k but n minus k k value also need to be changed alpha to the power n minus k that's why the values of these alpha to the power n minus k. So that's what we written here. So if I take this uh, condition uh, alpha to the power n I will take constant because uh, the summation is defined in terms of k. So alpha to the power n is constant I can take it outside. The remaining summation is equal to k equal to 0 to n alpha to the power minus 1 whole to the power k. So if I substitute the equation for this it says summation k equal to 0 to n for alpha to the power k is always 1 minus alpha to the power n plus 1 divided by 1 minus alpha if alpha is greater than 1. Here is in the particular problem we consider alpha is greater than 1. So that's why we can use that particular equation but instead of alpha we have alpha to the power minus 1 so that is what we considered here. So after simplification we can find this answer for y of n uh, is equal to 1 minus alpha to the power n plus 1 divided by 1 minus alpha but this range of n is now from 0 to 4. Less than 0 we got y of n equal to 0 under first case. The second case the range is defined from 0 to 4 for n value then I calculated y of n. This is second case. So if I move further this h of n minus k further over to the right side across x of k then what is going to be happen? The further possibility shifting this k equal to n moving away from 4. Nothing but this should be shifted away from 4 means this might be possibly either it might be coming this uh, if I suppose I take h of n minus k it is having total 6 values existed sorry 6 or 7 values are existed with respect to this. So if I move further these values what is going to be happen so the next possible case which we can find it out next possible case we can find it out. So case 3, so what it is says, I can move with respect to the least value of h of n minus k that is k equal to n minus 6. So now if this k equal to n minus 6, either it may enter into this or this is need to move beyond to that. So that is the two cases which I need to consider. So so first possibility uh, however I said earlier n is less than 4 I said now it should be less than or equal to 4 I said now I should move away from 4. So n is greater than 4 that is one condition but I will restrict for the least values of the h of n minus k that is n minus 6 values so n minus 6 should be less than 0. So that is nothing but if I take 6 to the other side so n should be less than 6. So the range now for n I can say 
from 4 to 6. So n values greater than 4 less than or equal to 6. This is what the condition. So now if I take these condition with respect to the equation number 1 as I earlier mentioned y of n is equal to summation k equal to minus infinity to infinity x of k into h of n minus k. If I suppose I take that conditions what you are observing with respect to one instance for case 3 if you take here all 0 to 4 is overlapping except these values. So 0 to 4 is overlapping hence the range with respect to the summation k equal to 0 to 4 is need to be written. So 0 to 4 now substitute for h, x of k all the values existed so that is 1 h of n minus k what you can take that is alpha to the power n minus k that is what we considered here. So now the equation alpha to the power n is constant we can take outside so 0 to 4 with alpha to the power minus 1 using the same equation as I mentioned so I can get after simplifying this y of n is equal to alpha to the power n minus 4 minus alpha to the power n plus 1 divided by alpha minus 1. So this is now defined y of n or obtained y of n for the range of n from 4 to 6. So beyond that what is the condition that is what the case for we are looking forward. We are shifting the h of n minus k over x of k further away right side. So nothing but x of n minus 6 should enter into these x of k regions. Nothing but I can say n minus 6 should between 0 to 4. So n minus k I said earlier case should be less than or equal to 0. Now it should be greater than 6, 0, greater than 0. So n minus 6 is greater than 0 or less than or equal to 4. Nothing but if I take it for n, it should be n is greater than 6, n is greater, lesser than or equal to 10. So n range now 6 to 10 is case 4. So coming to the equation 1, substituting the same condition with the, the same uh, summation patterns, what we can observe if I move this n minus 6 between 0 to 4, the overlapping conditions vary with respect to n minus 6. If n minus 6 at 0, no problem, no issues. 0 to 4, we can all are overlapping. But however, the earlier case, that is not possible under case 4. So n minus 6, uh, here as per the instant, it is uh, one instant, it is taken from a 1. So n minus 6 is equal to 1 as per the instant over here. So till 1 to 4 is possible, but it is not always. It, suppose if I n minus 6 is started from 2, uh, 2 to 4 is existed, so that can vary. So the common constant is least values n minus 6. That is how I have to take the lower summation should be n minus 6, higher should be 4 with respect to x of k into h of n minus k as equation 1. So now I cannot simplify this particular condition with respect to the equation. So x of k however I know is equal to 1 overlapping and uh, of n minus k it is alpha to the power n minus k. But with respect to this it is not possible. We have to go into the substitution because the least significant bit all whenever the alpha term comes I can take the lower summation equal to 0. I will try to make it to 0. So that's why I will take k minus n plus 6 equal to some other notation. So equal to m. So then the limit will change like if k equal to n minus 6 then what is m? If k equal to n minus 6 substituting then m equal to 0. If k I substitute 4 then it is in terms of n it is minus n plus 10. So, so what is going to happen after substitution into these equations instead of k I am trying to get in terms of m. So I said uh, k minus n plus 6 equal to m. So here n minus k means it is 6 minus m. So after all this substitution into replacing k by in terms of m. So what is going to happen y of n is equal to summation m equal to 0 the upper limit lower limit is 0 upper limit is minus n plus 10 alpha to the power 6 minus m we will get. So alpha to the power 6 is constant we can take it outside what is remaining summation m equal to 0 minus n plus 10 alpha to the power minus 1 into the power m. So this is what we got. So moving to the further 
So simplification of this equation, what is going to be happen alpha to the power 6. So with the same condition or same equation, however, I, I taken earlier, the same substitution. So minus n plus 10. So plus 1 have to be added with respect to the power. So 1 minus alpha to the power minus 1 minus n plus 11. It becomes after multiplying, after simplifying, I will get alpha to the power n minus 4 minus alpha to the power 7 divided by 1 minus alpha this is what y of n for the range of 6 to 10 i'll just move further for the case 5 instant n minus 6 moving away from the 4 nothing but no one is going to be overlap between h of n minus k and x of k so under this particular case what is going to happen n minus 6 is greater than 4 nothing but n is greater than 10 that is what the case 5 condition over here none is overlapping hence the convolution sum provides uh, y of n equal to 0 so y of final answer i conclude it here for the problem for convolution sum y of n is equal to 0 when n is less than 0 or greater than 10 the between the two ranges i'll take the case number 2 case number 3 case number 4 as per the equation so this is what the final answer we need to get so i'll just move further into the another set of problems in terms of convolution time so convolution uh, sorry continuous time in terms of convolution integral so evaluate the problem statement is like this uh, evaluate the continuous time convolution integral uh, given below and uh, i need to plot it so given equation is this y of t is equal to u of t plus 2 minus u of t minus 1 convoluted with respect to u of t minus t plus 2 so i'll take this is one set and this is another set between the convolution x1 of t x2 of t i'll taken x1 of t is this u of t plus 2 minus u of t minus 1 x2 of t is nothing but u of minus t plus 2 so i just uh, plotted the two signals x1 of t here and x2 of t is also here i plotted to find the convolution between these two uh, signal this is in terms of continuous time signal hence this is called as convolution integral so it it follows like this y of t is equal to x1 of t convoluted with x2 of t under convolution continuous time um, convolution uh, it is convolution convolution integral so it says y of t is equal to integration minus infinity to infinity x1 of tau into x2 of t minus tau d tau here replacing t by tau that is what important earlier uh, with respect to convolution sum we taken in terms of k but here in terms of tau so here instead of uh, x of x1 of t x2 of t i'll try to represent it in terms of x1 of tau and also x2 of t minus tau so similarly earlier i have defined the same case for convolution sum so x1 of t replaced by x1 of tau t time changed into tau so here uh, this should be reversed uh, because uh, uh, t changed into tau then minus tau becomes it is reversed but the time here it is t minus 2 keep remember this is t minus 2 so now what we are doing using the equation 1 that is convolution integral equation i just overlapping x2 of t minus tau overlapping into the x1 of tau so first if i overlap this particular condition i just taking this t minus 2 before to this i'll try to overlap i'll try to overlap all these minus 2 to 1 is going to be overlapped that is what the first condition so case 1 says like this when t minus 2 less than or equal to minus 2 that instance which is mentioned here when t minus 2 which is there before minus 2 this uh, whatever the drawn in one color black color that is uh, x1 of tau and uh, the other one is in bit red color that is x2 of t minus tau that t minus 2 which is before minus 2 hence t minus 2 is less than minus 2 that is what considered that is nothing but the time limit here i taken t less than 0 so with respect to the equation 1 y of t what we are observing after overlapping minus 2 to 1 is overlapping in these two equation or sorry these two graph with between x1 of tau and x2 of t minus tau so with respect to these two graph the limit 
with respect to integration minus 2 to 1 with x1 of tau x2 of t minus tau d tau which is existed but for both x1 x2 we have amplitude equal to 1 so no issues with respect to this integration of 1 in terms of d tau it is t so the limit upper limit is 1 lower limit is minus 2 so after substituting i can find the answer y of t is equal to 3 that is for first case with the t is less than 0 now if we further move x2 of t minus tau uh, into right hand side of x1 of tau that is what is nothing but this t minus 2 moving into this in between between minus 2 to 1 that means it is going to the case number 2 that means t minus 2 should be greater than or equal to minus 2 or less than or equal to 1 that is nothing but t is greater than 0 t should be less than 3 so nothing but t values now lies between 0 and 3 this is what this is how the instant which is considered so as per this observation the time limit you can find the lower should be t minus 2 the overlapping case higher should be 1 so as per that the equation number 1 for y of t which is equal to the lower limit is t minus 2 upper limit is 1 with respect to x1 of tau into x2 of t minus 2 d2 but we know x1 and x2 both are having amplitude is equal to 1 so integration of 1 d tau is equal to always t but upper limit is 1 lower limit is t minus 2 after substituting i can find y of t is equal to 3 minus t that is for the final answer for case number 2 over the range of t is equal to 0 to 3 so if i move further this t minus 2 or x2 of t minus 2 values uh, the extreme left hand side having a least values at uh, time t minus 2 having 1 um, till infinity value and if I move this further uh, to the right side means it is greater than 1 if I do t minus 2 should be greater than 1 what is going to happen so that is the case number 3 when t minus 2 is greater than or equal to 1 um, slightly it might be overlapping but uh, it is not providing any values in terms of convolution integral so t is greater than or equal to 3 under this particular condition a, the none value we are going to obtain between the convolution integral of x1 of tau and x2 of tau hence the equation number 1 will yield the y of t is equal to 0 at case 3 that is for third instance from this the values some minus infinity to infinity with respect to time t is calculated and we got the final answer for y of t is equal to these three instances are obtained for convolution integral problem this is how we can solve the convolution integral problems and also uh, the previous cases you can look forward different variety of problem this is very important with respect to the examination point of view the convolution integral and also convolution sum is very important.